Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellisted. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. So this month we wanted to take a slightly different tack. We've been looking at how to do specific things in specific platforms, you know, and that's really useful stuff. But we wanted to take a look at some bigger picture production and engineering techniques that will probably give you a better understanding of production, regardless of which DAW or style of music you're producing. And so to get started with that, the first one I wanted to talk about was gain, especially related to volume, and understand the difference and how we can use gain properly to get better sounding mixes and tracks. So first of all, aren't gain and volume the same thing? No, they're not. And this is a major thing that trips up newer producers. Gain is about signal strength and how strong of an audio signal, whether it's analog or digital, is moving through your mixer, your microphones, your preamps, your DAW, your plugins, etc. Volume is just how much air is being moved by speakers or headphones, and they're measured differently. Everything's measured in dB, and this is one of the major points of confusion. And so when we're talking about analog audio, we're either operating in dBV or dBU. dBV tends to be consumer electronics. DBU is professional level. To confuse it even more, Pro Audio Gear works at plus 4 DBU and consumer is minus 10 dBV and it doesn't make much sense. But that's really a measure of the strength or the amplitude of the electrical signal that's moving through the equipment. And so they're just scaled differently to accommodate different types of electronics and the amount of overhead and noise floor required for Pro Audio Gear. When we talk about digital gear, we're talking about DBFS which stands for DB full scale. FS is an interesting one because it starts at the top is zero and then all measurements in digital audio are negative numbers. And we can never ever cross that zero threshold because if we do, we get digital distortion or clipping instantly. And so it's a totally different way of looking at it. If we can see, for example, here on my uh, DAW in Logics mixer, I have this track and we can see where our peaks have stopped at minus eight, minus 12, minus 7.5, et cetera. Every one of these is a negative number and we can never ever cross that zero threshold or else we start introducing true digital clipping. Whereas you'll see analog engineers on a board working in DBU are gonna be pushing it past zero all the time. And so this is a big confusion point. Analog is not digital. Analog has to worry about something called a noise floor and then something called headroom. Whereas in digital audio, there is no headroom above above zero because that's the top of the scale and as soon as we go past zero the computer has to either interpolate or crush or distort or clip somehow to accommodate the audio signal that's being digitized now to make it even more confusing we actually also have db spl and that's what we talk about when we talk about volume spl stands for sound pressure level with a sound pressure level we're actually measuring the movement of, of sound waves through the atmosphere and this is what we measure Say if we're at a concert and we're the sound engineer, we have to make sure that we hit a certain threshold for noise regulations. A totally different scale, a totally different way of looking at audio. Because when we're looking at production audio, we're looking at signal strengths. There's different types of gain that we need to worry about. Typically, if we're only working in the DAW, all we need to worry about is our DBFS and where it's happening across on our track. However, all gain is what we call additive. If I have two tracks at minus six that are playing together, my total volume is going to be at minus three. That's because of the nature of how gain works, because we're summing two tracks together and we're actually getting a stronger signal. So when I play this with everything at unity gain, we're going to actually see pushing past zero or getting close to the red. You see it right there. As soon as it comes in. Okay, and so even though we hit 0.3, we went red over on the, on the master meter, it's not the end of the world. The initial clipping is not necessarily something that's going to be heard, but you keep pushing it, keep pushing it. You're introducing digital noise into your tracks. By pulling various elements down, we're going to actually be able to control the level that comes in to our master because all of these are summing into our output. I'm going to go ahead and option click so all of my track peaks go away. And we can already see that just by bringing a few of those down, now my max peaks are at minus 1.4. Even that's a little hot. And when in doubt, you can always just pull your overall master bus or master meter down 
but it's generally best to engage in what's called good gain staging. Because like I said before, gain is what we're concerned about in audio. It shows us the level of the signals that we're capturing, creating, processing, and mixing together. All these levels add up to one big level at the mix because they have to get summed together in the audio engine. It's important to keep track of everything together and adjust it where it's needed. A couple of pieces of terminology we should be aware of. Right now, everything is just summing out through a master bus. This is a master channel, which is our output channel. We can see it over here in our individual view. We'll also see both on analog consoles and in a lot of DAWs, we'll create mixing groups. And Logic will do that with uh, summing stacks or with just auxes. But we'll do this to sort, say, our drums together, our synths together, our background vocals together. That gives us another level of control, another control point, whereas we can balance the levels of only, say, the background vocals against everything else. But regardless, we're caring about what's called gain staging. And we want to worry about gain staging because it's, it's basically appropriate gain management throughout the mix. And it ensures that both our groups and our master outputs aren't clipping. And if we're on analog gear, it takes advantage of being able to push each set of tracks into the sweet spot of that group and then blending them all together to maximize you know, the really musical efficient range of analog gear. So an important concept is the idea of unity gain. And unity gain is when a signal moves from one stage to another, whether it's moving through a plugin, moving from a track to a group, moving from a track or a group to a master output, etc. Unity gain is when it moves through without having to be boosted or cut. And this is a concept that comes out of analog engineering because we need to make sure that we have an appropriate signal both coming into a piece of hardware and going out of it to take advantage of the dynamic range of that hardware. Not quite as critical as far as tone shaping in digital equipment, but we do need to very much make sure that we have appropriate signal levels so that nothing is overloading. And if we're looking in here, first thing I want to do is make sure that nothing is really going past um, Unity. And then I have these reference, these peak meters, which are showing me exactly where we're at. That gives me a good visual kind of mathematical reference. A lot of people don't like to work like that, and that's fine. Just back everything off. And if we need to, always trim down at the output or trim down at the mix groups. Gain staging can be different between digital and analog gear, and those differences are definitely worth exploring. But the main idea is with gain staging is we want to just maintain the gain of our signals throughout the process. We don't want to be overdriving into a plugin. And we want to make sure, say, if we're running a compressor, our makeup gain is controlling the output signal to a point either to make up the gain that was lost from compression or perhaps to either boost or cut it as needed to make sure that we have a good signal strength. And so I can show that here on the drums. I'll solo my drummer track out. And we have all kinds of stuff going on here. And I'm just going to come over here to the compressor. And we can see that we have our input gain and our output gain. And if I'm trying to get loudness out of my track, maybe I do want to push into the compressor a little bit. But I need to watch what happens to it as it comes out. Because this is where we're really looking. I like to look at my drum kit coming in between um, minus 10 and minus 6. I generally either base my tracks off of the kick at minus 10 or the, the vocal at minus 10 and try to get everything adjusted against that. You're going to see good gain staging levels that come out of that. But let's go ahead and play this drum part and we'll notice as I adjust the threshold and the compression ratio, we're going to see differences in output gain. And we saw just as I adjusted that threshold way down and boosted the ratio, we started seeing peaks that were much, much hotter. And that's going to play hell with our gain staging. And so I'm going to bring my threshold up just to catch some of the high level transients and spikes. We can keep that higher. We'll even boost it up a bit. But here's my makeup gain. And then we also have our output gain. Both of those are tools to control the output level of signal going into our track. And one thing that I like to do here is if I get a good sound coming out of my compressor, 
maybe the next thing I want to do add a limiter that'll let me control the absolute output level without necessarily crushing the signal too much so we look at our input our gain reduction and our output and we've got good metering here in logic for that and so by using this limiter we can actually see that I'm actually driving the limiter fairly hard, but we're seeing some gain reduction happen, and we're able to then use our output level to make sure we still got a good signal level coming out. And we can always look at our track meter or our fader to adjust that limit. However, one thing to be aware of is that if we are using our fader, make sure we are in post fader metering, meaning it's monitoring after the inserts on the plug-in strip and every DAW has an option to switch between pre and post fader metering generally speaking. And so that's a good look at it basically using gain and we want to make sure that all of these as they add up don't start overdriving that master output. As I bring in additional tracks you'll hear this happen. Right there we can see now we're starting to get some some red so i need to trim something down i can maybe move it to the side a little bit for some panning that'll actually reduce the volume as it moves over to one side because of something called the pan law maybe i'll cross pan something over here and i'm also going to pay particular attention to things that have a lot of low frequency information kicks and bases because they're going to have more energy because it takes more energy to generate a low frequency sound <laughs> And yes, we can come in here to our master output and absolutely start doing all kinds of master bus processing, but we definitely want to get our gain controlled very much more before we ever actually do that. We want to be using our master bus processes to enhance the track, to shape it, to make it richer and more powerful, not just to control because we weren't able to balance our levels going into that. So that's just a really quick look at gain versus volume, gain staging. Thing to remember is that gain is not volume. If you need to hear it better, turn your speakers up. If you need to add more signal strength, adjust your faders or adjust your gain staging. So I hope that you have a better understanding of what gain is versus volume and the basic concept of gain staging. And in some future videos, we'll definitely take a look at some more functions of this as it relates to mixing and all of that. All right, thanks a lot. I'm Steven Ellistead with ADSR. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel, and we will talk to you later.